All right, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? It is your boy, The Glacier, and today I'm bringing you guys another in-depth tutorial on how to solo carry your solo queue games with Heimerdinger in the top lane. And there's a little twist to go with this video. Uh, basically, I gave myself one hell of a handicap, and I told myself I'm never going to go back this entire game, and I'm never going to buy any items. And there's a point. To this I wanted to show you guys just how important it is to deny your enemy laner from experience in gold as much as you can for as long as you can now you're gonna see me destroying kids without any items this game because of my level advantage and my gold advantage now even though I'm not using my gold advantage you can use your imaginations and see that if I were to have gone back and gotten an item uh, how much stronger I would actually be so without further ado guys let's just jump right in and get started Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is how to start with Heimerdinger. Um, keep in mind that uh, this is not my Heimerdinger guide. This is just a this is just one example game, so don't take what I say too literally. Okay. So basically, we are going against a Gangplank in the top lane and a Zinzao jungle. Now, these are really the only two things you need to pay attention to before you start the game because it's going to determine what summoner you have. Now, when I play Heimerdinger against heavy, heavy melees such as Zinzel, okay, or Riven or whatever, I like to run Exhaust because Exhaust allows me to easily 1v2 and it keeps me very, very safe, okay? So they have a Zinzel, that is exactly why I got the exhaust for him. Now most of the time I would take TP in the top lane just because of the pressure that it allows me to take. But as you can see, we are not on the bottom side of the map. When you start on the bottom side of the map, you always run TP in top lane no matter what, no matter who you are against. And the reason is, is because you can easily make your way level 1 to their red buff and easily take it, okay, recall. Teleport back to lane with the red buff advantage. Now, you know, I don't care if you guys are new to the game. You should all understand how overpowered red buff is at level 1, okay? Slapping your enemy in the face level 1 with a, as many red buff auto attacks as you can is going to shove them out of lane by level 2. So, always do that when you start on this side. But, when you start on this side, um, you can you can definitely do the same thing and take blue buff. Um, however... Uh, you know, taking blue buff is not really all that useful level one. Um, it definitely, it, it's not bad. You can you can definitely do it if you don't need exhaust. But I would say if it's looking like a better idea to take exhaust in the top lane against the, you know, whether it's one melee or double melee, take exhaust uh, over teleport. Otherwise, take teleport. And you can still make use of it uh, by taking blue or just applying pressure, doing whatever the hell you have to do. Okay, so since I'm not taking the buff or any buffs or anything, I decide that I'm going to um, just place some turrets down, okay? So the way you're going to want to place your turrets down is very simple. Um, since we are against someone that can easily take our towers, and actually you should do this against everyone, is we're going to start off by placing two towers in the back behind us okay so we're gonna play up here pretty much this is how you want your turrets at all times you want to have two towers behind you and then one in front that's exposed to the enemy laner that you're just gonna keep replacing okay all right so as you can see here by the way I didn't um, end up placing my turret down because what's going to happen, if you put your first turret down when the creep waves comes, uh, all that's going to happen is your min the minions are going to end up aggroing it and the enemy laner is just going to end up taking it completely free. So I decide to wait a little bit until GP decides to get a little aggressive. Okay. So I put my turret down when I see him going for the first Q and I thought I was going to be able to get a little bit of poke off there with my turret. But he got out just in time. But it's it's perfectly fine. Now I have my optimal turret formation. And things are looking great. Okay, as you can see here, what I'm doing is any time that he goes for a creep, uh, I'm pretty much going to auto-attack him, W him, do whatever I can to get him to low HP. 
all right and I'm gonna slowly but surely start to move my turrets up one at a time okay making sure to auto attack him every single time he goes in for a creep we need to punish him the whole point of this this Heimerdinger top lane is yes to get really really a far ahead of your laner and be really annoying but it's it's you want to you want to keep them low HP at all times so that you always have an opportunity to to solo kill them under their tower to dive them for your jungler to dive them just you, you want it you want them to not be able to do anything to you so if if I were to just sit back here and let him be full health then he could easily flash on me and do all these risky plays when his jungler comes um, but because he's low HP he can't do any of those things. Okay, again, notice how I'm auto-attacking him every time I can, whenever it's safe. Those auto-attacks add up. Remember that. He only has a refillable potion. Even if he had three, four, five health potions, whatever, it, it doesn't matter. We're still eating away at his, at his HP. While we still have two health potions and we're doing great, okay? Landing those auto-attacks, he's already at half HP. Okay, so here's something I want to talk about, and this is... Uh, Probably the most important thing about Heimerdinger is just the, the vision control and the 1v2. So I want you to see that anytime I'm overextended past this point, past this line right here, I always have this brush warded because this is the most common spot for you to get ganked, okay? I mean, this is really the only spot you can be ganked. They can't run directly through your towers and gank you. It's just it's not going to happen. So I end up keeping that warded. Now, I see him and I'm not scared so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bait him into my triangle of death okay this is the sweet spot this is where all three of your turrets are going to do the most damage and all three of them are gonna attack him okay so watch there's no reason for me to be scared here okay I run into the brush to try and just buy out some time here Stay away from GP's barrel. And what I do here, now this is important. I don't waste my E because a lot of low elo Heimerdingers would do this. They would try and go for an E and stun him right there and try and kill him. Wrong. Okay. He has a gap close. Remember, he has his dash. Okay. Even if he wasn't Xin Zhao, I could easily be flashed on right now and stunned. Whatever. Okay. But not only that, look. This is the triangle of death. Remember, we want them here. This is the sweet spot. This is where you 100 zero people. Okay, let's take pay attention to his health. Right now, he's getting DPS by this tower. Okay, and meanwhile, by the way, look because GP is low, he can't do anything to me, so I'm completely safe. Okay, wait for him. Drop the exhaust and the stun in the danger zone. Triangle of death, and boom. Don't even have to flash. Don't have to do anything. You know why? Because he's in the triangle of death. Look at that. And yes, remember, I told you to keep two turrets in the back, one in the front. Um, we're so far ahead of this GP right now that I'm actually allowed to do this. Um, you know, if this kid were higher elo, he would have taken these. Um, so I do recommend that you always keep the formation. Reverse this. Two behind, one in front. But look, as you can see, I mean, look at this easy okay that's why we take exhaust on heimerdinger in that specific situation okay and now what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna keep doing work i'm just gonna keep poking him under tower keep doing my thing we try and go for the dive there unfortunate we got his flash though and i'm just gonna keep pushing and i'm gonna keep trying to stop his recall now right there uh, that th this was kind of unfortunate, but here's something I want to talk about: is you don't want to ever let your laner recall for free, and you know the reason is is you want to deny him this farm. So by pushing this farm under tower with him still here, you have more and more opportunity to kill him, and it's time that he, it's time spent that he could be recalling and buying items and getting an advantage. So we should have we should have realized that any any time yeah any time the top laner goes missing for even like a second like this he's recalling it's it's obvious so run your ass up there and stop his recall so unfortunately we missed that 
But it's okay. We're just going to shove this under tower. We're just going to keep doing the exact same thing, all right? Go drop a ward because I'm so overextended. What I'm doing now is I'm keeping my turrets in a position where the creep wave is not going to just run up to all three of them and take them out or where he could barrel them. They're, they're far enough back to protect me from ganks and still be useful to where if he tries to all in me, then I can just kite back. Notice the spacing of the turrets too. You have to keep in mind that putting, putting your turrets too close together leaves them open for AoE attacks just like GP's barrels. That's why you want to have nice, nice spread out turrets. Boom, land a nice little harass. Auto attacking with that red buff. Look at the damage on that red buff. Three auto attacks for the Storm Raiders, or for the uh, Thunderlord, sorry. All right, keep replacing the turrets. See, this is this is pretty much the gist of the Heimerdinger lane. There's really nothing that you need to do um, besides this, is I keep him low at all times, I keep this warded, and I'm always ready and willing to, to bait someone into my triangle of death for the 1v2. Now, remember the 1v2 is only possible if your top laner is low. He has to be at least half health or below, okay? Otherwise, what's going to happen is you're going to get flashed on by your top laner, whether it's a it's a tanky guy like Nautilus or Renekton or someone crazy like that. And all they have to do is do their full round of burst, and they can just simply flash out, and they'll be completely safe from your turrets. And then their jungler will clean up. And that's what ends up happening to a lot of Heimerdinger players. So keep on the pressure. Auto attack them whenever it's safe. Land Ws. You know, just, just spam your abilities other than your E. Your E wastes too much mana here. Okay, so one thing I want to show you is I noticed my jungler is going in for the dive. Now, anytime with diving on Heimerdinger, it is imperative that you tank the tower. Because you should be full health like 90% of the time on Heimerdinger, okay? So you have the luxury um, of doing this. And you're going to be way, way stronger than your top laner as well. So just do it, okay? And the way we do this is all we're going to do is we're going to ult Q, and that's it. And it's immediately going to aggro the laner every time, okay? Go for some stuns. Notice how I'm sitting here tanking the tower for my teammate. He's just going to sit there and clean it up. And my turret is is killing him the whole time. It's, it's so good to do this because he has to... Either he has to run up here where my other turrets are, or he has to run down here um, to safety. But I, we, I end up... Him, my jungler and I end up zoning him out by running down here so he has nowhere to go. Okay, I try and land a stun. And boom, there we go. Now, one thing I will say is me running down here was good to zone off the GP. But then again, I don't know where the jungler is. The jungler could very easily be right here and I could very easily be killed. Um, but, you know, I have Flash, and I know this plant is here, so I guess it ends up working out. But definitely be uh, careful of that. Uh, most of the time, I would say to kite up in most situations. All right. And, of course, what am I going to do when I come back is I'm going to shove out the lane again, and I'm going to keep denying GP of this farm. Okay. So, meanwhile, GP misses, I'm pretty sure, almost this entire wave. Let's see. Let's see if he misses this entire wave. He does. Look, he ends up missing that entire wave and then some before he even gets back to tower. Okay. All right, so he just missed. Let's see. He missed two entire waves of experience. Okay, sorry, not full experience. He missed around like 80% of the experience and 100% of the gold on two waves, including the cannon, okay? That is a lot of gold. That is a lot of experience, okay? Now we are about to have a two-level advantage on this guy. Look, we have a two-level advantage. Maybe not a full two-level advantage, but you get the point. Look at this. Come on. And imagine if I had teleport and I was going back to spend that money. Can you imagine how much of a monster I would be right now? All because I'm warding this. I'm keeping my top laner low. And I'm just... I'm 
positioning my turrets so I always have at least two or three up that I can lure them into the triangle of death, stun them after they've jumped on me, and walk away and get a kill. Easy. Every time. I'm not kidding you. It if if you understand how to keep your turrets alive, how to ward, how to pay attention to these small things, you can actually do this every single game. Now you are gonna run into those moments in time where you're against um, you know, very high CC um, jungler slash um, top laner combos or very tanky so you could be going against a nautilus and like a Jax, okay and that's really difficult to pull off but it gets a lot easier the lower health you keep your top laner okay all right slowly but surely taking the tower oh yeah by the way one thing i forgot to mention is keep in mind here notice my cs okay it is absolute garbage okay this is not acceptable you have all the time in the world to be last hitting, okay? You have all the advantage. You're zoning him out of farm. He can't do anything to you, okay? Which means you should be focusing on last hitting. Now, granted, you may be a new Heimerdinger player, or you may not be that good at last hitting with your wrenches, but just try and focus on it a little more, because I'm telling you right now, if if my CS was 60 here or 70, I'm, it, this game would be over 100%. Heimerdinger is not that great of a champion due to the recent changes to rallies and just all this stuff But if you are able to keep perfect farm and you do everything you need to do What I'm showing you in this guy's this this video You should be able to win every single game and climb all the way up to whatever the hell your desired elo is It is it is really this easy guys All right again Keeping my turrets nice and spaced back. I always have a safeguard turret, one or two behind me. And then look, I can just keep replacing the turrets because I have two stockpiled. Keep poking him. All right. This is pretty much all I'm going to do. Um, now, I will say... Um, there's going to be a lot of opportunity to dive your top laner, especially when they're a very squishy target like this. So what you're going to want to do is shove out the wave completely. Wait till you get your full wave. And then all you're going to do is ult Q under tower and try and land a stun W combo and just run to safety. That's it. Very, very safe way to ult. And it's also going to push him off the tower. I don't think I end up going for that here, though. I think I'm just trying to... I'm just trying to prove the point that even if you are a, a terrible Heimerdinger player, even if you are farming like absolute shit, you can still do this. You can still have a, a monstrous lead on your opponent, and you can still easily pull off 1v2s, no problem. Okay, so... This was an opportunity that I should have taken to dive. And remember remember what I said, I'm not playing to my full capacity here with Heimer. I'm, I'm trying to prove the point. Um, I Notice how I have the creep wave, okay? His creep wave is all the way back here. I know where it's at, okay? All you have to do is go up and just place your, just alt Q. He can either, he can decide to stay and try and like kill your tower or he has to run away and he has to lose this CS. And if he tries to come back, he's going to he's gonna die because he'll be too low of HP. So yes, I 100% should have dove him there. But this is okay. And I try and go for a nice little play there. Let me just show you real quick. So this is a really good play. Um, this will work against most people that don't have a freaking cleanse as a W. I totally forgot about this. Um, this was me being a noob. Um try and go for it. I also thought I'd be able to kill him in time before he W'd. But basically what this does is I ult W from pretty far away while he's not really paying attention. And they get stunned and I drop the W on him for the kill, but you know, it's GP, so he cleanses that with a heal. And let's see how much CS is or CS he misses here, okay? Let's see. Okay. Looks like he's going to end up missing the entire wave again. Let's see if we can go for two waves. Let's see. Okay, almost. 
So about I would say a wave a wave and a half. Now keep in mind what less than less than two minutes ago we just an item two entire waves, and now on this one again we do another wave and a half. You got to remember, even though it may not seem like we're that far ahead of him, um, that is simply because he had um, TP. But look, we're still two levels advantage. We still have a two level advantage. If this guy did not have teleport, I promise you he would be level six right now. We would have three levels on this guy. Okay, just going to keep poking him just like that. Proc your Thunderlords whenever you can. Now I'm trying to play a little safe here, so I'm back in the brush. <coughs> <coughs> Alright, don't know where the jungler is. I'm not too scared of the jungler because I still have exhaust and flash up. And I know I see I have my mid laner and my jungler near. So that's it. Just keep shoving the wave. There we go. I think we end up diving him here. Let me see. Or he ends up running away. Nope, he ends up staying. And then he ends up running up. Now, look at I mean, he's dead no matter what. So I don't advise that you chase this because he's dead no matter what. But, you know, I'm low, man. I'm low health anyway. I can't do anything by myself. So I just decide to kind of help out. But here, here's a here's a common mistake too is you do not want to be anywhere near this guy. I mean, he just flashed. He just used everything he had. He used ult. He used flash. He used everything. Okay, so there's no reason for me to be approaching this guy. He is 150 percent dead. That is a double buff Riven with full HP and a level advantage. You know he he's dead. Okay, just let him let your team get the kill. It's okay. Okay. Now, here is the best clip of the entire game. I want to show you guys this um, because this is, look, I have no items, guys. Look, I have, I have zero items. I haven't recalled a single time. There's the jungler, Xin Zhao, very bursty, okay? But let's, let's keep in mind some factors here. Number one, which is the most important thing, is I have a three-level advantage on this kid. Three three levels okay now i wish i could click on these things just to show you the the differences in stats alone okay but three level advantage that's a lot that's that's health that's armor that's magic resist that's ability power that's ad that's everything okay and then number two which is almost as important i have exhaust and flash okay so i can easily outplay this kid so what i do is i decide to bait him i know he's going to jump on me all low elo players do this and all I got to do is when he jumps on me, I drop the exhaust for the 40% damage reduction. But more importantly, the slow so I can land my stun on him very easily. Okay. Here he goes. And I decide to drop the exhaust, stun him, and I flash away because I don't have a W to follow up on it. And also, I really didn't want to risk dying here. I feel like Xin Zhao... Um, if he got those two auto attacks on me, I probably would have died. And I didn't really know if he had flash or not, so I just decided to try and kite it out. And boom. We get the kill. Very, very easy. Very effective. thing about Heimer is he is very, very good um, when it comes to, to outplaying your opponents. You need to save your stun for after people jump on top of you. Ooh, look, look, look. Check this out. So this kid TPs to lane, and I'm not even there. I'm running away, okay? But meanwhile, he's sitting there just getting destroyed by my turrets. Now let's watch. Let's watch what happens. He actually ends up dying to my turrets. I, I was not... I didn't attack him a single time. Look at this. I didn't even land my stun damage. That's it. I just start running away, and this kid decides to kill himself. <laughs> Oh my god. That is ridiculous. Okay. Now another thing I want to show you is the reason why I was going mid was because there's nothing I could do to the t the, the top laner that uh, teleported to lane. Okay. Now I am very far ahead of him. But in most situations, uh, you, you shouldn't be up there anyway. Look, you have your whole team is grouped mid. It's time. Let's go and take this tower. 
So I decide to come with my team and group mid and siege, all right, which you should do. If you are ever in a situation like this, take what is free. Take the objectives that are free. Do not be up top lane. Do not be bot lane. This is how you prolong the game, okay? Or that is how you prolong the game, rather. So I'm just going to keep my distance. I have a turret down, ready to go. I'm not trying to be greedy or anything. And then, boom. There for my team when they need me. Blitzcrank lands a nice hook. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to siege mid. I think, um, yeah, wait, does Kale end up going back? No, he doesn't. Okay, so we are basically just sitting mid lane right now. And we have our turrets down. We're very safe. I have my ult. I have my, my stun. And I'm aware of what's going on the map. So I know I can't be killed. So I decided to go drop a ward just to put my mind at ease, which you should do. We have decent vision control in their jungle. But you still should not be overextended without good vision. So I decided to drop it. Now, I can be all in by Zed right now, but I'm not scared of him because let me show you why. It is very easy to outplay Zed players, especially bad ones. Okay, so I land a W on him, and he decides to all in me. And um, really, all you have to do with any melee champion like Zed is just wait for them to use whatever the hell they have, their, their flash, their gap closer, and they're going to use it right onto you. And then you stun them right on top of their face, okay? So, I'm waiting for him to ult me, so I decided to land my ult Q. Or to drop my ult Q, rather. Okay, and then as soon as he decides to ult me, I wait for him to come out, and I throw my stun right on top of his face. Now, you know, this was a little unlucky. I didn't expect him to be to the right of me. I kind of thought he would be somewhere over here, but I, you know, I don't know how Zed works that well. So, I ended up missing my stun. Um, which was a little unfortunate because he 100% was dead if I landed that stun. Because not only was Kale going to hit him, but uh, my turret would have just kept DPSing him. So that would have been a very easy kill. And we get his flash. But as, as you can see, there's nothing for me to be scared of in terms of 1v1 or even 1v2s because of just the, the way I'm setting up my turrets with the triangle of death, the exhaust, using stun correctly, my alt Q. You, you just have to understand the power of Heimerdinger. Okay, now I'm grouping up with my team. I just grabbed the plant for some extra HP. Okay, now we are going to siege mid as a team here. Um, at, like I said, as Heimerdinger, because we are so far ahead of, of the enemy team, um, and we have all of our turrets. There's no reason why we we can't siege a lane by ourselves. So we do a nice job. Blitzcrank lands another hook on GP, gets the kill, and we take the mid inhib. Now, after this mid inhib, a lot of people would just go straight for middle and start to take, or at least try and take these um, Nexus towers. But you got to remember that look, they're all about to be there. Everyone is about to be up. They have no problem defending their strongest towers in the entire game. And also, look. Look how free this is. No one's defending it. Just go take the objective that is free and that is safe. This is going to help you not prolong the game. And it's going to help you close out games a lot faster. Okay. So all I'm doing is I'm just sticking with my team here. That's it. And that really is the gist of it, guys. As you can see... This game, I did not go back a single time. I have almost 70,000 gold. Um, the level advantage alone is strong enough to, to be able to single-handedly 1v2, 1v1, anyone if you stay ahead. Now, granted, I farmed horribly. Um, you need to make sure that you're, you're keeping track of your farm. You have to focus on it. I kept my opposing laner down to low HP so that I could not be 1v2'd and lure them into the, the triangle of death. And it, guys, it's that easy. Like I said, use your imaginations. Imagine if I spent this 7,000 gold, just how strong I would be. All right, guys, that is it for this video. I hope you guys learned something. Uh, this was a little bit of a shorter one, but I just wanted to prove that point of the, uh, the XP and the gold advantage 
how important that is to have on the opposing laner. So I hope you guys learned something. Drop a like a Reno on this video. I would definitely appreciate it. And most of all, guys, most importantly, hit that sub button, boys. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.